Well, welcome back. Welcome anew. I'm Joseph McClendon III, and you have just stumbled onto or deliberately found the Further Faster podcast. I'll be your coach, your guide, and maybe even your mentor for this next little while to help you do exactly what the name implies, and that is to go further faster in becoming more wealthy. And around here, wealthy means to be healthy, happy, and financially abundant. And today, it may sound like today is going to be about unicorns and crystals and rainbows and that kind of things and the laws of attraction and things like that. But oh, it is not. Today, I'm going to talk to you about, matter of fact, I'm going to start a little bit of a series, and that is something that is called the 21 Immutable Laws of Magnetism. <laughs> and you'll understand a little bit more that, about that when I come back, but I'm going to give you just a little bit, a little hint. And that is that just like a regular, any kind of magnet that you can think of, it not only draws th stuff towards it, but it towards other things as well. And wouldn't that be a great, unbelievable trait to have about yourself? So grab a pad and paper, and I'll be right back with the, the 21 Immutable Laws of Magnetism. Welcome back. Welcome back. Well, I hope I teased you sufficiently about magnetism. And I'm going to start off by saying this. I, I said it in the very beginning that this may uh, have a smack of uh, crystals, unicorns, and rainbows, and amorphic things that are un undescribable and unexplainable. Oh, but far from it. Um, and I'm going to start off by saying everything that I talk about and everything that I, uh, I might even suggest to you, two things. Number one, I don't teach theory meaning that this is what I not just do for myself, but I do for other people as well. I've taught other people uh, as well. I don't teach something that I have not practiced and done for myself and gotten results for myself. I don't teach things that I have not and helped others uh, do the same for themselves as well. And then secondly, it's all based in science. I taught at, the, I, I taught at UCLA for several years, and um, I taught to the engineering and management department, and those people are so smart. These, these were engineers. Only maybe 20% of my students were were uh, were um, undergraduates, meaning you know, eighteen to twenty-five years old. The rest of them were literally rocket scientists from from Jet Propulsion Laboratory to NASA and you name it. And they were all you know in their thirties and forties and fifties and things like that. And so they were really really smart people. And they also this was also back in the nineties, the early nineties. So internet. And, it, and let alone Google and anything like that had not become popular yet. You know, a, a matter. I remember back then, uh, email was just starting to become popular. The reason I share that with you is it wasn't like I could just go to Google or on YouTube and find something to back up everything that I had to say. I had to prove everything with facts and everything. So I'm going to start here by saying this: uh, my the conversation I want to start having with you, and um, I was just talking to our producer, and these are not necessarily going to be sequential, meaning I'm going to have guests in between here. But over the next several months, I guess, I'm going to go through and I'm going to cover all of these 21, what I call immutable laws of magnetism. And I'm going to start today. I'm not even necessarily going to talk about one of the laws as much as I'm going to talk about magnetism uh, itself, what it is, so that we can all be on the same page first. And uh, the reason I call it magnetism and the reason why uh, it is so important, because, again, the outcome for all of us here today, the reason you're listening to me to this day is to help your life go further, faster in whatever it is that you want. And so I'll, I'll start by asking, and it's a bit of a rhetorical question. Have you ever noticed that some people seem to be luckier than the rest of us seem to the ball always seems to bounce in their favor? They seem to uh, have things happen to them. And I'm not talking about silver spoon birthrights. And I'm not talking about those that are what they call the lucky sperm club that were born with, you know, with uh, a lot more, uh, let's just say, assets than the rest of us. I'm talking about people and even and especially people who started off with nothing and worked them, their way up to the top. And we look at those people and we go, wow, they're different. There's something different about them. I'm going to share with you a saying that my mom used to always say to me, and she used to say, son, you're special, just like everybody else. And what that means is, is that you got the same kind of body, the same kind of brain as everybody else, and how you use it will determine your path, your voyages, and your journey in life. 
And one of the ways that we use it is by becoming more attractive. And uh, I'm going to use attractive right now, and I'm going to come away from that here in a second. But attractive means that people and things tend to move towards you. And then you might think of yourself, okay, well, in its simplest form, what does attractive mean? Well, visually attractive. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that a really handsome guy, a six foot, you know, four handsome guy uh, that is that is financially abundant and all those things is a lot more tra- attractive to the opposite sex than, you know, a guy that's, you know, five or, or four, four and, you know, broken and, and overweight and, and unhealthy. And when I say attractive, I mean, there are more people that are going to probably move towards that. People be curious about that person than than otherwise. So that's just one way, the physical attraction side of it, the the looks side of it. But attraction goes much, much deeper than that. We've all also seen people. And by the way, the, the, the same thing works for an attractive woman by whatever standards of that particular culture is. But other things are attractive as well, because we've also seen, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, people who didn't have all those physical act- attributes, but people are still attracted to them for some reason. I'm not going to name any names because then I'd sound like the biggest jerk on the planet saying, well, this person isn't physically attractive, but they still are attractive. But we know of people who are, are, are healthy, happy, financially abundant smart and things like that and for some reason those people seem to be have a a different life than than we might uh, 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 think that the average person does or that we have for ourselves well i'm going to um suggest to you that it that there's something else going on that what makes them that way that makes them have that kind of life is something that is outside of what most of us are taught and can even see And that is something that I call magnetism. Now, first off, and my producer was telling me just a second ago that I did talk about this and I shared something with you before. Uh, If you were watching me, I took two magnets and I put those two magnets together. And of course, they clap together. I took a magnet and some steel and I hold them close to each other and the steel drops. I have to bring the steel to the magnet for it to stick. And I can literally shake it off if the magnet was not strong. But two magnets come together together very, very quickly. And the reason being is both of them are attracting. And so in life, to be magnetic does not mean just that you are the magnet. You're actually magnetizing that which you desire, that which you are focusing on, that which you want. You're causing it to radiate with magnetic impulse and you're drawing it towards you as you are being drawn towards it. Now, why that's important is in that same experiment, what I do is I take one of those magnets and I flip it over and you can't hold them together. They push each other away. And that's what happens to human beings. So if you have that type of life, if you're that kind of person, you wonder why you sabotage and you wonder why things are happening different for other people, but you get so close and then then you fall off. That's called sabotage. And that is you flipping the magnet over. That is you becoming, uh, 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 you're flipping the polarity, if you will. And, and you don't, you know, you don't get up early, you don't stay up late, you procrastinate, you hesitate, you don't do the things that you said you were going to do. And that's what happens to all of us. Now, one of the ways of obviously helping with that is something that we call neuro encoding. And that is to program yourself so that you don't have those uh, thoughts and those behaviors and those emotions as often or as much. And awareness is always the first step, but there's process to be able to do that as well. And the reason I'm sharing all of this with you is I'm going to start off by saying that the first and and, and the whole and the whole point of all of this is to make you more electromagnetic. And the uh, the concept that I want you to think about is this. And remember, the reason I shared this with you about my students at UCLA is I had to go out and prove this stuff. I had to go out and prove by by bringing up things that people that are way smarter than me and smarter than them have already figured out. And that is, I'm going to give you three different examples. Number one, it's what Einstein said, E equals MC squared. Energy equals its, uh, equals mass times itself. And all that really means is, in case you haven't figured it out, is that everything is energy, is energy. Every piece of mass, whether it's a speck of dust, a bottle of water, the iPhone or the that you're listening or watching me on right now, all of it is made of the same stuff, energy. And what holds it together, second thing, are at least these two things, or these three things, electrons, protons, and neutrons. 
electrons, protons, and neutrons. And the glue that holds all of it, and if you've ever looked and, and seen the, uh, the example of what that looks like at a subatomic level, you know, you see the, the, the molecules or whatever uh, orbiting each other at the center of, of that whole thing or, or, or on one of those three is something called electrons. What, is ele what are electrons? It's just electricity. That's all energy is. And I'm oversimplifying this because I want you to get it that guess what you're made of? The same stuff. Everything on this planet is made of the same stuff. Electrons, protons, and neutrons. And if there's electricity in anything, guess what it is? It's a magnet. Electricity is magnetic. Electricity draws electricity towards it. Listen, if there is a live wire on the ground that's plugged into the, the, uh, plugged into the wall or somehow it's a live wire and you touch it, why is it going to electrocute you? Because the electricity from the electrons from that live wire are attracted to the electrons in you and they're gonna overpower you. They're gonna try and, and the one that has the most power is the one that's gonna win. And if you've ever seen anybody or anything, and I hate to say this, but I remember when I was in, in uh, college or high school and we had a biology class and we would take a frog and we'd dissect it and you'd take this frog and you'd hook the electrons to the dead frog. And guess what? Its leg would twitch. Its leg would go out and twitch. Why? Because the, even the dead material of that animal is still has electrons going through it as well. And when you connect the electron, electricity to it, it does what it's supposed to do. Now, as oversimplified as this is, I want you to get that this is going on all the time. You are made of, of electrons, protons, and neutrons. Every cell in your body, every atom in your body, every molecule in your body consists of the same things. Well, guess what else is? Third thing, guess what else is? The very planet that you walk on. If everything else, even the air that we breathe, is electrons, protons, and neutrons, then guess what? The very earth that you walk on is electrons, protons, and neutrons. And guess what the biggest electron that we got going on on this earth? It's, it's, it happens to be at the center of this earth, and it's called, the, it's called the earth's core. If you've done any studying, the earth's core is just a molten blob of, of uh, iron that rotates in a certain way. And if you know anything about, about physics, if you rotate uh, iron, spin it, it's going to create an electromagnetic pulse electromagnetic energy. They have instruments. And, and again, don't take my word for it. Go look it up. Now, the reason I'm sharing all this with you is guess what that electro, electromagnetic pulse always does? Not some of the time, not most of the time, but all of the time. It is constantly, constantly sending that pulse out and attracting to it. It's, it's magnetizing everything else. We call it gravity. It's magnetizing you. It's magnetizing the dust particles. It's magnetizing everything. So much so that it, it takes thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of pounds of thrust to break free of the Earth's magnetic pull. Because it is always, it's not just pulling towards it. It's magnetizing that thing. It is, it is, it is putting that through unseen forces. It is sending that electricity into something else. Look, I was just thinking about this the other day. I have a new iPhone. And when I bought the iPhone, they said, hey, you might be interested because what's already in this phone is a battery that is wireless charged. And I'd heard about it, but I, I never I thought, okay, well, that might be convenient. If I bought the thing, and guess what? All you got to do is sit the phone on top of it with no wires at all. Electromagnetic energy goes from the wall into the charger, into the phone. And that phone sticks to that thing until I have to pull it away. There's a magnet. Excuse me. There's a magnet there. Why am I saying all this? If everything on the planet is made of the same stuff, if everything on the planet is made of electrons, neutrons, and protons, including that flesh that you call your body, including that mind that you have, including the thoughts that you have, doesn't it make sense that it possesses the same thing? Because not only is the earth attracting it to you and you to it, you can and are doing the same thing for other things. And the way that we do it is through the 21 immutable laws of magnetism.
And each one of those is just designed to make you more and more magnetic. Now, I said earlier, uh, I, you know, we've noticed that there are people that, that seem to be uh, more lucky than us and things seem to flow for us. And that's happened to you as well. We've all had those situations where we've thought about something, we wanted something, and all of a sudden it showed up in our lives. Well, in that moment, you were being magnetic. We've all had that situation where we get all green lights every day, you know, or, or wherever we're going, or we get the, the, the best parking spot. And, and all the time we just go, oh, I'm lucky today, or this happens or whatever. Very few of us go, hey, I'm responsible for that. Hey, I made that happen. And I know this is a stretch for a lot of people to go, no, that's just luck. Well, listen, I'm here to tell you, I don't teach theory. I'm that guy. I'm that guy that has not only witnessed it, but does it for myself as well. Now, by the way, when I go places, I'm going to say, and people who know me know this, 85% of the time, wherever I go, there's a parking space for me up close. I expect it. And there it is. But guess what I don't do when it's not? I don't go, oh, this doesn't work. I don't go, oh, this is a bunch of crap and I was just lucky those times. Guess what I do? And this is important for you to know because I want you to get this as well. When something doesn't happen the way that you wanted it to happen, just use one word. The word is yet. It didn't happen yet. Because guess what? If I drove around long enough, guess what's going to happen? There's going to be a parking space that opens up. If I don't get what I want right away, that just means it didn't happen right now. God's delays are not God's denials. Whatever your religious beliefs are, you know, it, it doesn't mean it's not going to happen. It just didn't mean it just meant it didn't happen then. And when it when I think like that, then guess what happens? Guess who feels better? Me. Guess who still has new uh, positive expectancy? Me. And when I do, guess what? I'm more magnetic that way. Now, let me give you another example. The other example is this. Have you ever been sitting in your car and you feel somebody looking at you and all of a sudden you look over and there are those bug eyes looking at you? Of course you have, all of us, or vice versa. You're sitting in your car, you feel somebody looking at you. Or, I mean, and you, you maybe you see somebody attractive, you look at them and they catch you looking at them. Of course you have. Or you've walked into a room and when you walk into a room, people notice that you walk in a room, they turn around, they look at you, you're going, what are you looking at? That kind of thing. Or you walk into a room and nobody could, could care less. They don't notice that you walk into a room. What's the difference in both of those scenarios? The difference is you. The difference is how magnetic you are. The difference is, is when you look at somebody in a car, three things happen, four things happen. And this is real, really important for you to get this. That it happens every time, not some of the time, not most of the time, but all of the time. When you put your attention, which, by the way, is the very first law of magnetism, <laughs> hint, hint, spoiler alert. When you put your attention and intention, in this case, on someone else, but it's the same for everything else, because that someone else is made of the same stuff as, as something else, electrons, protons, and neutrons, four very important things happen. For you to, to for you to recognize and utilize, number one, it makes your electromagnetic energy grow, expand. If you if I took a, a picture of you with a, a camera called called Karelian photography, you could see your electromagnetic energy around you gets bigger. Said differently, you become more electromagnetic. You become more of a powerful magnet. The second thing that happens is they, in this case, there's a human being, but again, it's synonymous with everything else. It feels it. It senses it. The third thing that happens is it causes them, it, to put their attention and intention on you and the same thing happens their electromagnetic energy or their pulse expands grows geometrically the fourth thing that happens is because now you got two electromagnetic energies happening at the same time focused on each other they're drawn towards each other they become attracted to each other. They become magnetic towards each other. Not one of them is, is moving towards. We're both moving. It is the reason why you turn your head and look at that person. Now, 
What happens is when that happens, it, it, it happens to us. We don't, we're not even conscious. We, we can't even say, I, 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 I noticed when, when I, I felt it when somebody did. It's an internal thing. It's just, it, it happens. It's biological. It's physical. It's physiological. It's what happens. It, what's happening inside of us is our electrons, protons and neutrons are becoming excited and because they become excited, we become more energetic. And when we become more energetic, what is energy? Energy is just electricity. Now, this is the way of using, utilizing that electricity to your favor. And it's the same with when you walk into a room. If you were to look, if you were to track backwards, what were you thinking about before you walked into the room? Were you scared? Were you upset about something? Were you ambivalent or were you excited about something? Maybe even excited about walking into that room and seeing something. Whatever happened when you walked into that room, if your electromagnetic energy was bright, was bold, was, 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 it was uh, geometrically growing, then guess what? Others around you are going to feel it. And when they feel it, the same thing. They look towards you. They look at you. Their attention goes towards you, and the same set of sequences happen. Your electromagnetic is, energy is, is big. They feel it. Their electromagnetic energy gets big, and you look towards each other. It is as simple as that. And when we come back, I'm going to tell you the very first law of, mag, uh, of the 21 laws of, of magnetism, and I'm going to show you how to use it. I'll be right back with you. Hey, what's good? It's me, Joseph McClendon III. And let me get real with you just for a second. Now, you've probably heard me talk about this before, something that I call the thieves of our dreams. Procrastination, hesitation, fear of failure, fear of success, self-doubt, self-loathing, imposter syndrome, and fear of rejection. Well, let me ask you a question. What if you could not only retrain your brain and your nervous system to automatically default to your absolute best thoughts, emotions, and behaviors, but you could also do the same for others that are going through difficult times and challenges in their own lives and things that are stopping them from creating the life of their desires. Well, this is what I call neuroencoding. And at the risk of sounding arrogant, these are the same tools, methods, and strategies in neuroscience that I've used to operate in the upper 5% of all of my own businesses, especially as a coach, a speaker, and a presenter for the last 30 plus years. The Neuroencoding Institute provides you with the knowledge, the tools, and unmatched support to become a certified neuroencoding specialist and guide you to the life of wealthiness. And remember, wealthy means to be healthy, happy, and financially abundant. Go to neuroencoding.com com to speak to an enrollment specialist today, and I look forward to serving you at the highest level. You're enjoying this episode on Angel Phoenix Productions Podcast Network. To explore a complete lineup of quality programs and media production services, head on over to angelphoenix.com or like our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash angel phoenix productions. Well, welcome back. Welcome back. Before I left, we were talking about the whole concept of us magnetizing others or, or things that are around us and us magnetizing ourselves. So now I'm going to talk to you about, over this next little while, I'm going to talk to you about the 21 immutable laws of, mag of magnetism now that you know uh, what it's about. And it's the, the concept or the, the outcome is so that you not only utilize what I'm about to share with you, uh, not just periodically or or utilize it when you need it, but utilize it so that it becomes your norm, so that you neuroencode yourself, that you default to that. And that's how, like I said, people that, that, uh, that seem to be luckier than others, meaning they seem to attract things and things happen uh, more for them, they live that knowingly or unknowingly. They're just that way all the time. And so the physics side of it that I talked about before is one thing, but the physics of human beings is equally as important. In the physics of human beings, I call it human physics. <laughs> and that is that anything that you do over and over again, you will become better at. Anything, whatever you repeat, as the old, as the old saying is, um, repetition is the mother of all skill. Whatever you repeat, not only do you get what we call muscle memory and, and uh, nervous system memory, but what happens is because we do it over and over again, 
our our entire um, psychology changes. We start to believe that that's just the way that it is. You don't have to think every time you get in the car, you don't have to go, okay, wait a minute, what do I do next? Matter of fact, most of the time you get in the car, you're halfway down the road before you realize you're even driving. There's been times I've been in my car and I'm, you know, all almost everywhere where I'm where I want to go. And I don't remember any of the stoplights. I don't remember any of that stuff. It's because it's all inside of you. It just happens automatically. And so how that happens is because we repeat it over and over again, so much so that that becomes the norm. I know all of us have had situations where, for example, you know, you get in the car and you're, you're meaning to go somewhere else, but you're going in the direction of somewhere, the same direction of somewhere else that you go, and you wind up taking the same off ramp or the same on ramp that you you would normally go to go to work or whatever, even though you weren't going there. That's familiarity. And so the outcome of this whole magnetism, the 21 immutable laws of magnetism, is to get you to automatically do those things that serve you in that way. And so the number one, the very first law of magnetism is the law of focus and attention. Focus and attention. And it's just as I explained before, and it's why I went through all that stuff before about how it happens when you put your your intention and attention on somebody else, those things that I just talked about before happen. But guess what? That is happenstance when you just happen to be driving down the street and you do that. But guess what? If you do it deliberately, you do it over and over again deliberately, then you start to hone that skill said differently. I remember this is further faster and further faster is about those three things to be or about to become about to help you become uh, more wealthy and wealthy means to help be healthy, happy and financially abundant. So if you put your focus on your health, then the exact same thing is going to happen. If you put your focus and your intention and attention on your health, then guess what? You're paying more attention to it. And at the very least, you're more likely to make better decisions in that way. But if you do it in the way that I'm going to suggest to you, you're not only more likely to make better decisions that way, you're going to start to default to make better decisions that way, said differently. The most popular question that we ask, as a matter of fact, the number one question that we ask in the, at the Neuro Encoding Institute is, what do you want? When somebody comes to me and they got a fear of dogs and I say, what do you want? They will say, I don't want to be afraid of dogs anymore. When somebody that comes to me that has had some sort of trauma that has happened in the past in their life and I go, what do you want? They go, I don't want to feel bad like this anymore. When somebody comes to me that's depressed, when somebody comes with any problem, 99% of the time when I ask them, what do you want? 99% of the time they tell me what they don't want. I literally had a man tell me once who was depressed. He said, he said, I said, what do you want? He goes, I, you know, I'm, I'm depressed. And I go, okay, well, what do you want? And he goes, I, I, I don't want to feel this way anymore. And I go, okay, great, what do you want? And, they, and he goes, well, you know, I, I'm, sometimes I almost feel suicidal. I'm like, okay, well, what do you want? And he goes, well, I, you know, I just don't, I just, you know, feel terrible all the time. You know, I wake up in the morning and I'm sad in the morning and I'm sad all day long and I'm sad. And I go, what do you want? And he goes, depression washes over me like a scalding hot wave of debilitating emotion. And so I know that this person, guess what he's focused on? What he doesn't want. And the same laws of physics happen. Guess what he's gotten good at? And guess what he attracts into his life? And guess what he's magnetized into his life? Those things. And so instead, I, say, I will tell him straight up, listen, you tell me what you don't want. Tell me what you do want. And they have a hard time thinking of it. When I can get that person to go, I want to be excited. I want to be hopeful. I want to be optimistic. And while they're saying it, they are it. Let me say that again. While they're saying it, while they're thinking about it, while they are, wait for it, focused on it, they are it. They are glowing with that electromagnetic energy of the thing that they want. And guess what they're doing in that moment? They're being optimistic. They're, they're actually polarizing something else, situations, circumstances, and other things to come into their lives that way. I can't tell you how many times people go, listen, just one visit with you, and I can't believe you know how things have started to change around me. I've started to feel better and so on and so forth. Well, yeah, duh, because what I get is just them to get them to do that number one law of, uh, of attraction, a uh, number one law of magnetism is to put your attention and your intention, the law of, of, of intention and attention on what they want. 
Because I, this what I, I, I promise you that if you're not rapidly moving towards you, what you want, it is because most of your time is not spent on that. And I shouldn't even say most of your time. I should say a good deal of your time, at least some of your time with high intensity, focus on what you want. Said differently. If you're watching me right now, my eyes are up. I got a smile on my face and I've got some positively looking, positively looking at me. That physical change inside of me as I'm focused on what I want. Then guess what happens? I feel that way. And a feeling is nothing more than an, an elevated electromagnetic or a, a electricity, electrical energy going on inside of us. That's it. If I was to break it down to its, to its bare minimum, there's different emotions. Sadness carries with it. A, 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 an electromagnetic frequency, meaning, meaning how often that pulses, as does happiness and excitement towards what I want. So when I put my attention and intention on what I want, use myself as an example, by the way, but it's the same with you. That positive expectancy of, yes, this could happen. Yes, I, you know, I want this. I want that. And we daydream in a moment because think about it. When you're, when you're dreaming about something that's possible, that's getting ready to happen, how do you feel in that moment? You feel excited. You feel like it's possible. And if I was to take a picture of your, of your electromagnetic energy in that moment, you would be glowing with electricity. But guess what else is happening? Whatever it is that which you're focusing on, I don't care if it's across the room or across the state or on the other side of the world or scattered out all over the world, it's starting to pick up on it as well. And the more you do it, the more you go with it, the more it goes out there, the better you get at it, the more it happens, it starts to. Do you think for one moment, I'm only going to use him as an example, do you think for one moment, Elon Musk, I shouldn't say for one moment because he does have his doubts, he's human beings, but do you think that the, the, the bulk of his focus on when he was making the electric car was on, oh, I don't want to make a car that, that, that you know, is going to be a failure. No. The bulk of his energy, the bulk of his focus, the bulk, bulk of his intention was, I'm going to do this, and this is going to be the greatest car in the world, and I'm going to do this. And guess what he's gotten really, really good at? That, creating something from nothing. He's gotten really good at attracting around him and bringing around him people that are smarter than him, bringing around him even the word Tesla. I heard him talking. You know, word, the, the word Tesla, where he came from, is he thought, well, I, wanna, I want something that is going to exemplify what, uh, you know, electricity. And it just so happened that he, when he was in college, he studied uh, uh, Nikolai Tesla. And, and that's where the name came from. And so I'm saying all of this stuff because all of the stuff that, that you focus on and, 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 oh, do not get me started on my soapbox about how the, the, the powers that be, whether it be television, whether it be even your cell phone, other than what we're doing right now, you know, because this is positive stuff coming in, is designed to keep you not focused on what you want. So said differently, the law of intention and attention. Focus and attention on what you want is the number one thing. If you did nothing at all other than come away from this and go, what do I want? And write down what you want and look at that every day. And then the next time we talk, we're talking about the next, the next thing about how to start embedding that in your nervous system. Look at it every single day, several things, several times a day. Then what is going to happen is you are going to start becoming more magnetic. The more you do it, human physics takes over. It becomes who you are. And remember this always, and this is why I say this, life is always exactly what you dare to make it. And for Fortune, fortune favors the bold. So boldly step up and dare to be magnificent. I'm Joseph McClendon III, and this has been Further Faster, and I will see you on the next episode. I'm out. This podcast was a production of Angel Phoenix Productions. Explore more episodes of this show or other great shows on the Angel Phoenix Podcast Network by visiting angelphoenix.com. The views expressed in this show do not necessarily represent those of Angel Phoenix Productions or its advertisers and may contain language that's unsuitable for younger listeners.